So I've uh, come up with something that I think might be a new... Why is that dog barking? Uh, I came up with something that I think might be a new uh, concept in 3D printing. I haven't seen anyone do this before for speakers. I uh, thought I'd explain it in the video because it's kind of hard to um, show what's going on in pictures. So um, I used to go to uh, Boeing Surplus, which was this store um, in Renton, Washington, where Boeing sold uh, all kinds of crazy stuff that they used for making airplanes. Uh, and they would sell sheets of a composite material. I forget the name of it, but it's basically uh, it's a honeycomb core uh, covered in, I believe it's uh, fiberglass or uh, paper dipped in fiberglass resin, polyester resin. Um, again, can't recall the name of the stuff, but basically they use sheets of it for making things like airplane wings. Um, it weighs very little, uh, but it's very rigid. So as you can imagine, something, well, I guess, so for loudspeakers, we're not super concerned about the weight, um, but I think that for 3D printing, uh, it gets kind of tricky because in order to get the, in order to make it rigid, you really need walls that are pretty thick. Um, and I'll show you an example of what I'm talking about here. So uh, about a year ago, I started to switch to making waveguides out of uh, solid, uh, solid plastic. And the reason I did that is that uh, I live out here in near, uh, near Las Vegas, and it is so hot here um, that even uh, ABS and PETG uh, will full on melt in the sun. Um, I actually had a speaker that I was measuring and I had it outside for probably about 20 minutes uh, and it actually started to warp in the sun. So um, I switched over from using uh, 3D prints where I had uh, infill uh, to going with solid walls. Uh, the idea basically being that uh, with the solid walls, the warping is much less noticeable. But then the problem with solid walls, as you can see here, uh, how about here? It's hard to do this one-handed, but um, basically, so yeah, I can see there. I, I can bend the plastic with with very little effort, as you can see right there, because uh, it's about, I think it's about five millimeters thick. So when I made these waveguides, my intention was always to back them uh, with foam or fiberglass or both, uh, basically make a, make a CLD sandwich. <clears throat> so here's an example of a CLD sandwich here. So this is, uh, this is uh, I believe it's XPS or EPS foam um, with a covering on both sides of wood. And so the idea, of course, is to have something which is relatively light, uh, but we're taking advantage of the thickness to make it rigid. Um, and it's, as you can see here, it's pretty rigid. I mean, it's not quite as rigid as this table, uh, but this table is, I believe, about one and a quarter inch thick solid wood. Um, this isn't quite that rigid, but it, it's pretty darn rigid. I can't easily bend this. But then we have another problem here, which you can see on the edges, uh, delamination. Uh, so that's not great. Um, I'm sure there's some great solution to delamination, but from you know some of the videos I've seen, you know even Airbus has struggled with this. They've they've got a, a composites they've made where the um, I believe they use fiberglass and aluminum, and the fiberglass would delaminate from the aluminum. So um, once it got delamination, you know we're kind of defeats the purpose of having the composite. Uh, here's a piece of MDF uh, for comparison. Let's see, again, this isn't very scientific here. I should probably have an actual machine. Um, but this this is about half an inch thick, and it's it's not bending. Okay. So the idea that I had here um, is basically to it, it looks similar to an infill. Um, you know, so this looks like a looks like a honeycomb infill. 
The catch here, is if you look at it right, um, there's some holes which are connecting. Let's see, there you can see it there. So there are holes connecting the various um, parts of the honeycomb structure. So the net effect is that we can have um, we can have a shape that could be. It, it's basically like having walls that are like two inches thick with honeycomb infill. Um, but the catch is that it's not taking up any significant amount of space uh, because the holes in the structure uh, allow air to enter into the honeycomb structure. So in a lot of ways, it'd be like having uh, this sheet here, uh, again, similar to what Boeing was doing, the sheet here filled with honeycomb, um, but again, leaving holes in the structure so that air can get in there. Um, that way, we're not wasting a bunch of space in our, uh, our waveguides or our... Um, loudspeaker enclosures. Uh, here's one made of uh, pet G and this thing, I mean, it's, it's, so, it's solid as a rock. I mean, this thing is just no joke. I can't get this to flex at all. Um, ironically, uh, I think I'm actually going to cut down on the wall thickness because the Walls of the honeycomb structure. I made them two millimeters, and it's 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 probably overkill. I could probably get away with as little as one millimeter. Um, was also looking at some videos online about the strength of various infill structures. Uh, honey honeycomb is pretty darn good, uh, but it takes about three times as long to print, and that's one issue that I was finding with these. Um, is that Wow. I mean, they, as you can imagine, they take about three times longer to print than a conventional um, infill. So uh, that, that's going to require, you know, a little bit of optimization. But kind of the end goal that I'm, I'm visualizing is probably go with a, I forget what it's called, is it cubic or something? Um, rectilinear, that's what it's called. Uh, go with a rectilinear uh, rectilinear shape for this infill and again put holes in the walls of the infill um, holes that are let's see perpendicular to the actual infill itself again the idea being let's see if you can see it there see the holes there at the bottom um, the idea being that the air can enter the various chambers Another thing, um, and this is purely speculative on my part, is that I think it, it might wind up serving as a kind of meta material if we're lucky. Uh, if you look at the meta material absorbers uh, that I've designed and posted on DIY Audio, uh, they, look, they look a lot like this. Um, I didn't use any kind of, you know, there, there was no math involved for this one. But basically, the way that made of material absorbers behave is is uh, pretty similar to a transmission line. So you have um, the sound is radiated into um, you know again basically these these structures. Each each um, honeycomb structure uh, functions like a transmission line, and if it's tuned properly, um, the Radiation uh, reflects at the terminus of the transmission line. It's a closed transmission line. And then it comes back, uh, nullifying the rear wave of the driver itself inside of the enclosure. Uh, so we might have something similar going on here. Uh, could be particularly interesting if you uh, took the structure and you filled it up with um, fiberglass, uh, um, wadding, you know, the kind of stuff you use for insulating a wall um, or, or uh, polyfill. The polyfill is not great. Uh, rock wool would be another uh, possibility. But I think that there is the potential there to not only have a structure that's strong, 
but also structure uh, which could uh, basically improve the sound by absorbing sound inside of the enclosure. Uh, if someone really wanted to go to town on this, they could probably turn this into a made of material absorber uh, basically by closing off uh, some of the um, some of these wells and then connecting them. And again, they're going to be connected anyways because they must be connected so that they uh, basically behave as if they're largely acoustically transparent. And again, that seems like a oxymor oxymoron there saying that I want it to absorb sound, but I also want it to be acoustically transparent. But that's not, that's actually possible uh, because made of materials are tuned <laughs> to a single frequency. Uh, anyways, that's kind of kind of far out there to do that. Uh, in the short term, I just think that this is a pretty interesting way to 3D print a speaker. Um, it is, it is, you, know, you can see that thing moving there. Uh, you know, look how flimsy that is. Um, and you, I, obviously I could make the walls like half an inch thick, uh, but if I did that, it would take so long to print and it would use up so much filament. It's just unreal. Uh, speaking of filament, uh, this does eat up a lot of filament. Um, the reason why I have two of these that are unfinished is that both of them, my spool ran out <laughs> while I wasn't paying attention. Um, so long story short, I think I'm going to keep hacking away at this. Uh, the idea being that I'll probably make this rectilinear instead of hexagonal. Rectilinear will print about three times faster. And according to what I've read on uh, YouTube and the like, or not read, saw on YouTube and the like, um, rectilinear is about 90 to 95% as strong uh, while printing much quicker. Um, and then if it's not obvious from what I'm holding here, as I mentioned, uh, this did not finish printing. So when it when it is finished printing, one side of this shape will be solid. Uh, so this the, the end game here is that this thing is probably going to be about, I think it's probably about two, in inch, two inches thick. So it will behave somewhat like a, somewhat like a, a CLD um, composite, uh, but instead of being filled with foam that uses up all that space, uh, it will be filled up with this this perforated infill. Um, and uh, if you guys have followed the work of Geds, I don't, I don't know if I always have a hard time pronouncing his last name. I think it's Geds. Um, Geddes? Uh, he started out doing CLD using um, foam and carbon fiber uh, in the Suma. And then he wound up going to a um, a plastic construction. I can't remember the name of the plastic that he used, but basically he also moved away from the complexities of CLD because um, it's, you know, it, it's, it's time consuming. It takes up a lot of space. Uh, and then for me, the, one of the biggest challenges with CLD is delamination. And then another thing that's a drag about CLD is it really limits the kind of shapes that you can make. Um, I, I typically make CLD out of foam and wood, and if you're <clears throat> if you're going to go that route, uh, it, it's it's probably going to probably be making a monkey coffin, making a square box. Um, one way of doing CLD, of course, is to make it wood and then put foam inside of the box, uh, use an adhesive to attach the foam to the wood. And add, add another layer of wood. Uh, but then again, the challenge there, it's even more complex than making the CLD ahead of time um, and just hideously time consuming. And I'm, I, I hate making boxes and I hate spending two months on a project since I never finish anything. Anyways, that's my, uh, that's my little video for today.